Okay, YouTube, it's Friday, August 12th, and at least we're back to making videos again, hopefully on a regular basis. And what we're doing today, you can see fuel lines laying around and everything. Uh, before I tell you what I'm doing, I'm going to explain to you what caused me to go ahead and do this little project. The 68 Torino uh, gave me some troubles going to the Street Ride Nationals. Uh, fuel pump quit on it and uh, and it really was a it wasn't a fun experience um, it was Thursday I was going down to the Papa John State Stadium here in Louisville Kentucky going to register for the Street Ride Nationals and um, it started pouring rain buckets of rain and for like a so solid hour I got on a road where there's a lot of heavy traffic in an industrial area it's called Critton Drive and um, my fuel pump decided to uh, start to fail on me and luckily and I got stranded stuck in the middle of traffic and heavy downpouring rain for two or three times it happened and luckily I was able to flip the switch on and off to this electric not this pump it's this is the one off the race car but luckily I was able to flip the switch on and off enough to get some fuel in the bows and get it safely to a motel parking lot catch a ride home and um, get my uh, F-150, hook it to the trailer, and haul it home. So I guess it's a good thing I went ahead and bought that truck and got the trailer going because uh, I desperately needed a truck and trailer that day. So uh, what I ended up doing, just to get it to the Street Ride Nationals, I still need to put that video up. By the time this video gets put up, that video will be up. Um, I stole the fuel pump and the filter canister off the 64 Fairlane. My, my race car and uh, got it going so first thing I'm going to do is redo my fuel lines on this I ordered a bunch of stuff got a bunch of goodies I'm going to try to do not do too much talking but I always end up doing it anyway turn this loud fan off and where did all my parts go I don't know where they're at and um, all my stuff is back here <coughs> Got some shoes because I do plan on doing some bracket racing this year. Um, belts, that's for the 64. Fuel pressure gauge is for the Torino because mine is all messed up. And I'll show you about that. This is for the. I'm going to redo some fuel lines on the 64. It, I pretty much, it's got the same issues with fuel lines that the 68 does. And what's going on with that? And I also have one fram filter for my fram filter canister that originally was on the torino we're going to get that back on there and get the canister for the 64 back in its original home i ordered an extra filter because i did not have one and nobody had one in town when i needed one on that particular weekend got some fittings i also have some other fittings i already had and uh, here's what's what we're going to do to the torino um, before i show you this pitiful fuel system, I want you to remember this was done before I had a very good knowledge of fuel systems. I've learned a lot since then. First of all, here's the feed line which came, which was hooked to the 8AN fitting out of the fuel cell. Right there. And um, here's the first thing that's wrong with it. As you can see the bend that can cause fuel feed problems. I mean, this, this 429 is by no means a race motor but um, you know a big engine that uh, does perform pretty well especially a big cubic inch engine um, that can cause some issues it can cause some fuel starvation problems at wide open throttle plus something else I used to do that I don't like anymore I used to use compression fittings on a luminal line not safe don't do that I got lucky and nothing bad happened but there was always coming loose and leaking so so we're getting rid of this and Another thing that's wrong with this system is the fuel pump is right next to the exhaust pipe, which means the electric motor, which is up here, is probably seeing a lot of heat. Even though this is a tailpipe and this pipe may not get that hot, then again, maybe it does. We're going to mount this pump and the original Fram filter that I used to have on this car all on one mounting plate, hook them together, and put it in the middle. I'm sorry, my hand is, okay, I put it in the middle, away from all that heat, as far away from the heat as I can possibly get it. 
and we have some actually it's a lot we have some 10 an steel braided line what i just showed you that i bought new is 8 an which is plenty for even the race car but uh, the reason i got some this 10 an i found it real cheap on ebay a long time ago it's the type of fuel line they supposedly use on nascar and uh, i was told that people sell this stuff cheap because they replace it every so often just for uh, safety issues there's really nothing wrong with it it's just that NASCAR or 200 and something mile per hour cars um, you know they uh, they replace stuff a lot whether it needs it or not just for uh, you know just for, for safety and now these take a kind of a weird fitting that I can't find anywhere maybe somebody knows of these type fittings and where to get them I couldn't find anything but this, these two fittings came with this line, and I got this cheap. I forgot what I paid for it because I bought it like five years ago. But I have figured out how to make. No, oh, man, I need my, um, I need my tripod out here to show you. But I have figured out how to make. Where are those fittings? I think it's going to work with the regular style 10 an flare fitting, or yeah, the compression fittings on the regular type steel braided line similar to this stuff right here um, as you can see this is not a Teflon liner it's a rubber fuel line liner this is your basic steel braided line good stuff and, but in this stuff here I don't know if it's better or not but um, it is used on NASCAR stuff so maybe it's better this is just a harder plastic Teflon but I think you can make the regular AN fittings fit on this by trimming your steel braid away to where just the Teflon is there. This will screw onto that. I cannot show you with just one hand. And then wherever that fitting went, I was not ready to make this video. And um, here we go. Yeah. That's right here. And this goes in here and once that is screwed all the way in then this just kind of screws in there and it compresses that in there kind of like a pressure and it's a, like a hydraulic line pressurized line but we're going to try it out on this type of fuel line see if it works uh, if it doesn't no money lost because I already had this stuff laying around the uh, only thing I bought new is what I had over there and that's to uh, redo some lines on the race car but my Feed lines on a race car, the 64 Fairlane that is, are just like this piece of crap right here. So we're going to go ahead and start doing all that. And uh, hopefully we'll make a decent, decent video of it. Stay tuned. Okay, we got everything torn off of it. And the first thing I'm going to do is clean up my Fram filter canister. And uh, before I clean it up and show you how it goes together, I've got my new filter. And my seals and actually there should have been two seals like this but only got one so I'm going to use that existing one down there um, before I clean it up I just want to show something here if you watched my previous videos uh, I was talked about using E85 in the Torino and a lot of people talk about corrosion and stuff just want to show you this that's what this filter canister looked like uh, but it was on this car like 10 years before and yeah I know way too long before or between filter changes for sure but uh, maybe I changed a filter or two along the line but um, it's not really that bad I see a little bit of this stuff here but I have seen small engines with just regular pump fuel which does have ethanol ethanol in it that does cause that but really it's it's not too bad it's not causing a lot of bad stuff to happen here just wanted to show that now I got me a my Folgers coffee can, fill it up with gas. If you want to save your gas for cleaning, after you clean some parts, put your lid on it. These are pretty handy for that, and they do stand up to the gasoline. Let me clean this up, and I'll show you how this filter goes together. Okay, first thing I guess I'll show you after what I've already showed you is um, how this Fram filter goes together. This is a part number HP G-1. I got the filter. I can find my reading glasses. I'll even give you the filter number. 
if you buy one of these canisters, I don't know if they still make these or not, they probably do. I bought this a long time ago. Filter number is HPGC1. Okay, and, and if you do buy one of these, you usually end up having to order the filter, so make sure you always have a spare one on hand. Okay, I'm just gonna, it's pretty easy, just slide your filter in there. And like I mentioned earlier, there is a rubber seal here. For some reason, they didn't give me a new one of those. They didn't give me two of those. At least this one. In with the filter. But they did give me... Yeah, and that's, it's also spring-loaded down in there. Look in there. But they did give me this rubber seal, which goes there. And as I've mentioned before, usually whenever I put seals in, whether it's for pretty much for anything. And it goes in a little easier if you rub a little bit of Vaseline on it. Vaseline is better than grease because Vaseline gas will just pretty much, and actually transmission fluid will pretty much dissolve it. So that way you get the benefits of having your seal slide in place easier if they do have to slide in anywhere and it doesn't clog anything, doesn't get any, any needle and seats or in your fuel system or if you're doing a transmission it doesn't clog anything up but they gave you this seal here which I guess that's in there yeah just gonna push it down in there kind of deep and let's see hopefully this thing won't make me look too clumsy and not want to go together and there's a boat that goes through this it's got a brass ring on it which is supposed to seal it hopefully it still will and of course I don't have a ratchet with me I got one underneath the car and we just want to start bringing that down and make sure when it starts to meet the Surfaces start to meet here. Make sure nothing's crooked or out of whack so that you don't bend it, screw it up, because you can do that quite easily with the leverage of those threads. Should have mounted this in the vise, but I didn't. Okay, I'll probably get that a little, and that's looks like it's together, went together good and straight. That's probably tight enough, but I think I'll go ahead and put that in the vise. Yeah, you can see the vise now. isn't much to hold this. I'm going to tighten that up too much and tear it up. God, I don't, yeah, don't want to force that too much. That's plenty tight. And that's that. And what I was planning to do, first, my first idea, I told you I was going to make new brackets for this. The pump and the filter. I wanted to mount them closer together and in the center away from that. And I was thinking, let's see, that is the, it's marked inlet and outlet, meaning fuel goes in and then out, of course. Fuel pump, this is an old Mallory Comp 140. This is what was on the race car, the exact same type that was actually on the Torino 2. I just swapped them out. And uh, later on in another video, we're going to try ordering a rebuild kit because the pump that went bad. Uh, it's the electric motor, not not the actual pump part of it. But these are usually marked in and out too. Actually, this one shows an arrow where it goes in and out. The arrow's pointing that away. So that goes in. Okay, we're going to be one. The pump will be hanging this way, of course. And what I was thinking of doing is mounting them close together. And I was my first thought was to just get a brass. Right this way. Just get a brass fitting and mount them together solid. But I got to thinking, if I have to 
remove the pump. I'm going to take the whole assembly off. And so I'm thinking of some kind of coupler for a flare. I may still, I don't know, I may still use the one solid brass pipe fitting with pipe threads on it and screw it together. I will probably regret it. I like it. It's going to look good that way, but like I said, it would make removing the pump a little more difficult because, and actually this goes, yeah, they go. Actually, this, yeah, this, it's going to be on there like this. I'm sorry. There we go. We got in and out. Okay. So I was thinking about just putting a fitting in between there and bolting and screwing them together solid. But I may, I'm going to have to take a trip to the hardware store tomorrow. And I'm thinking of maybe a brass coupler or something. Okay, let's see how this works. So I've got this clamp down right on top of the line that you just saw me cut. The line is or the cut is on the bottom, lined up with the edge of this table, which is fairly straight, not perfect, but good enough. I've done this before, but not on this heavy a metal. It looks like right. it's gonna work out pretty good. At least we got it started. And I think something's hitting maybe. Ah, okay. And I think, I'm hoping, I want to avoid hitting it with a hammer or even a rubber mallet because it kind of makes a dent. It doesn't really matter on this piece because it doesn't have to be perfect. But, but I like to practice for stuff that really does need to look better, you know. So, try this. Got a splinter. Ouch. Uh, we're going to have to um, hit on it. See if we can get the rest of that band. I'll probably tell you what would help. Slide that out a little bit now that we get the band started where we want it. It's not going to be a perfect sharp band, but uh, it's going to look good enough for being under the car. We'll paint it black. And One will know. It'll just fine if someone does peek under the car. See how this does. Or well, maybe I can just pull it on down now. And eh, we're gonna have to beat on it. Hopefully the rubber mallet shouldn't. This is pretty thick metal. There we go. Nah, it's actually too thick for that rubber mallet to really dent it. There we go. Just trying to eyeball up a good knife here. Yeah, I want to be perfect. There's always Bondo, right? There we go. I think it's going to be good enough. And 
perfect mounting bracket. Now we got to do some trimming and cutting and I'll probably gusset it after I get everything mounted on it. Okay, so here's what the bracket looks like. Here's what I come up with, and uh, I still got a, I still want to add some gussets to make it a little stiff. I may put like something. Well, I don't know if it'll work because of the. I'll probably put a gusset here. So, and I also need to cut it a little shorter here because there is a uh, check valve that you sometimes have to adjust. I've never had to, but they say you do sometimes. So. It turned out okay, and I'm kind of at a standstill now. I'm going to have to order some 45 degree fittings because this line here, that's just not going to make that type of bend. I can't really show you one handy because I'm holding the camera. But, so I'm going to have to continue this video until my 45 degree fittings come in. And that should work out pretty good for this short of a piece. And like I said, I did, and there was no way I could do the straight... Uh, pipe fitting. I, was, I, was, I thought about using the brass as I mentioned earlier and the reason I can't do that is because this pump would be hanging really low and if you saw it on a car you would understand it's like just below the rear end housing which is just too low so I don't want to do that and plus it's better to have gravity on your side when your fuel is going into the pump and this this filter will also be a little bit lower than the outlet on the gas tank so that's the way it's supposed to be for optimum fuel flow as they say so one thing I can really do to this is to take this back apart sand this paint it and it'll be ready for whenever my fittings come in which will probably be Monday or Tuesday so I'm going to continue this video at another date and thanks for watching everybody and I guess I can go ahead and get the race car back together because I do have all the parts for it